All right, welcome back, gang, and it is time for week three in math, and not in geometry, but in algebra one. So uh, what I'd like you to do is start by changing the top of this paper. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. All right, so I totally messed that up. So this is algebra. Y'all know that, but apparently I forgot that. Algebra. All right, so this is our algebra notes guide for week three, and um, we're going to go from an equality to an inequality. All right, so some of y'all that are my English buffs know the difference between these two words and uh, what that prefix is going to do. It's almost like a, a prefix of like un, like it undoes something, an inequality versus an equality. Um, so. The main idea here is that this is an equation, but um, but it's not uh, an equal sign, okay? So an equation without the equal sign. And, and what that does is it, it allows you to have more than one answer, okay? And that's kind of the key to these. Um, you will have a lot of answers to to a question it means that you're not just looking for one number that makes the equation true you're looking for all numbers that make the equation true so I'm gonna write right here more than one answer in fact on these kinds of problems a lot of times you will have an infinite number of answers and I know that sounds weird uh, so if you haven't done these before I'm gonna give you all the notes and then we'll talk through sort of a uh, you know what this means on paper okay so here we go um, when you're doing these problems you're gonna have uh, answers that look like one of four possibilities okay and we're gonna start uh, by drawing out these possibilities and then we'll explain sort of what they mean so the idea might be that um, I'm gonna draw actually you know what I'm gonna do let's draw a bunch of number lines because since you can have more than one answer the best way to describe to somebody all the answers you can have is to actually color them in and I know that sounds elementary but I think it's kind of awesome like you're gonna have this number line okay like zero and here's your negatives here's your positives and we're gonna have this for all of them one two three one two three just kind of sketch a bunch of number lines it doesn't have to be perfect here. All right, cool. And so once we have all these, um, you're going to be shading on the number line. And you actually may have seen a little bit of this in middle school, but you don't know like what it actually meant or something like that. So the way that this plays out is, um, let me color in red here. Um, what you can have is let's pretend that the answer is going to be... Um, around the number one. Let's pretend that number one is sort of the key to our problem. And we have solved some equation, or, or rather it's an inequality instead of an equality. And let's say that we get an answer where it's like all the numbers that are bigger than or including one. Now, if you have a solution that looks like this, okay, I'm gonna show you what it, the solution looks like, but also what it might have looked like in the inequality, and then in words what we just found. So um, I have colored in the dot on one, which means that we get to include one as a solution. So if we were solving a problem, our answer might have looked like this. X can be anything that's greater than or equal to one, and that's exactly how you would say it, okay? Um, all numbers greater than or including one or equal to. If you don't like the word including, just write equal to, okay? Um, so you have seen this symbol probably before, but maybe you haven't seen how it relates to shading. Um, you know what greater than means you've done that since like second grade but it's going to be like putting this together with an algebra problem so uh, the op the exact opposite of this would be maybe the arrow goes the other way so notice um, if I do this then it's pretty much the same exact thing right except now it's all the numbers that are less than or equal to one and that's what you could write over here all numbers less than 
or equal to 1. Now what happens if you get a solution and uh, we're still going to use 1 as our magic number. I'll make this one fancy like I did the other one. Um, let's say you still want to use 1 as an answer but you don't get to include 1. Like it's going to be all the numbers that are bigger than 1 but for whatever reason you're not allowed to actually land on 1. Well in math what we do is an open circle and what that open circle means is that it's okay to be really close to 1 like you can be 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, you can be really close to 1 but you can't actually land on the 1 and I think I was saying 0, 0.0, I meant 1.001 okay so you can't really land on that 1 but it's going to be all the numbers bigger than it so this would be like x is greater than 1 so that's what would happen if it's numbers, all numbers and a lot of times in math you'll see the word strictly greater than 1. It's like they want you to know that they are serious about don't touch 1, baby. All numbers strictly greater than 1. And you guessed it, the next one would be if we shade the other way, which would mean all numbers strictly less than 1. So now we'll do an open circle but shade the numbers less than 1. Okay, so that's pretty much how this goes. Now, uh, this is just, I wanted you to see what the answers look like before you see them uh, show up in a problem. So now that you know sort of your options with the symbols and how to shade with the symbols, now let's actually do some problems. So... Um, what you're going to do, or what I always tell my students to do, is when they see a problem, your step one is pretend that you see an equal sign and solve it like normal, okay? So um, if I give you a problem, it's going to look a lot like last week is what this means. So if last week you were like, oh, here we go again, solving equations, blah, blah, blah. Well, now you get even more practice with that blah, 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 because it's just that important in algebra, people. It's like going to show up. All the stinking time okay so like let's say that you do all right so like uh, 3x minus 2 is less than or equal to 7 okay so let's say it's a problem like this then what you would do is um, pretend that's an equal sign just kind of you almost ignore it and you just solve the problem as if that was an equal sign so you know to add 2 to both sides hopefully you know that you bring down your 3x, that becomes a 0, recopy the symbol in the middle, and then that's a 9. Now what do you do? Well, you're trying to get the x by itself, so now you would divide by 3. So we're pretending that's an equal sign, but we keep recopying what we see throughout the problem. Okay. Once you get your answer, I mean, now it's pretty much just like what you saw shaded above. And that's where sort of step two comes in play. So step two, analyze the symbol inside of your inequality and then sketch your answer on a number line. That's all you have to do. So um, instead of x equals three, if it was x equals three, you'd, you'd be done, right? But this says x, in this case, it's x is, if we had to write it out, x is less than or equal to 3 because there's that little line underneath so it gets to be or equal to 3 and then we'd show a picture to go with it. Now I always like to show 0 on my number line pretty much always um, just because it lets your you and your teacher and your friends and your parents that care <laughs> about math it lets everybody see where you are in this number line and then you could go over to 3 and you could decide how to shade. Do I need an open circle or a closed circle? Well, I need a closed circle because it's or equal to. And then you're shading all the numbers less than that, which means I'm shading to the left. Yay! So you might have actually seen this before. Uh, what's going to make it tricky is going to be right over here, the be careful. Be careful! Okay. This would be a piece of cake all the time, except there's one funky little rule that only comes up ever so often, and that's what makes it stupid and tricky because it only comes up every so often. You got to be careful, okay? Um, here's the rule if dividing 
by a negative. So if at any point in the problem, at any point at all, if you decide to divide the problem by a negative number, you must switch the sign in the middle. And I'll put flip. That sounds better than switch. You must flip the inequality sign in the middle. The inequality sign in the middle. So what might that look like? Okay, so let me make up a problem to show you kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, let's say that I had given you like um, 1 minus 4 times r plus 1 is less than 6. Okay, let's say this was the problem. Then what you would do is remember that whole pretend it's an equals and just solve it, right? So hopefully you would know to distribute as your first step. And let me switch colors just because I can. All right, switch colors. All right, so it would become 1 minus 4r and then minus 4. Okay, remember to distribute that negative as well. And um, then we're trying to get this by itself, the r by itself. So what is 1 minus 4? Well, that's a negative 3. What? Okay, negative 3. There we go. Okay, and then your next step would be not to get rid of the 4, but to get rid of that negative 3. So let me add 3, add 3. Negative 4r is less than 9. Okay. From here, you would want to divide off the negative 4, and this is where this be careful comes in, because the minute I do this and notice, uh-oh, that's a negative, that's a negative, the minute I do that, I better take my handy-dandy eraser, pen, marker, whatevs, and flip that guy in the middle. So instead of being a less than sign, I'm going to cross it out. It is now a greater than sign. That's the only time you flip it, okay? So now my answer is that r is greater than negative 9 fourths, and I would still need to graph that out. Okay, so for some of y'all, this might be the hardest part is graphing it out if you don't know exactly what that number is. But, but you know, just kind of you're, you're estimating, you're approximating. Let me put 0 down. Um, a negative 9 fourths. Well, 4 goes into 9 twice with a remainder of 1. So that is negative 2 and a quarter. So if it's negative 2 and a fourth, 1, 2. So I'm just going to go a little bit past 2, and that's kind of the place that I'm looking at. Now, do I need a closed circle or an open circle? Well, I need an open circle because there is no little equal thingy underneath this, which means that this means it's all numbers that are greater than negative 9 fourths, okay? And so if r has to be greater than negative 9 fourths, then we have to know to shade our answer to the right. And we could do something like that, and that would be all of our answers. So inequalities, you know, they show up in math because a lot of times there isn't just one answer that makes a statement true or even a real-world situation true. There's a lot of numbers that are going to make that situation true. So it's it's what you're saying is that if, if you want this side of the problem to be less than 6, then you can take any number that you just shaded, plug it in for R, and test it, and you would see, oh yeah, that is a true statement. This left side is going to be less than 6 if I take any number over here and plug it in. And that's kind of what you're doing is you're finding a big old range of solutions that work for your variable. Um, you're also going to see this with graphing when we start to graph, which we will do this summer. Uh, so not sure how much of this that you have seen, but hopefully this will come by in last week and just put a little extra step on last week. And then, um, yeah, and, and then you'll get even more practice. So good luck with the practice problems. It shouldn't take you that long, and you can watch the solutions. Thank you.